Right. Uh, hello, Charlotte. Hello, Neil. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, very grateful for your time. I understand you're in Dubai at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, uh, we are. Yeah. Where it's a little COVID free or well, some some sense of normality here. If things are open and it's nice. So. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, I, I, I watched your film um, the other day. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's uh, uh, very you, Neil. Lots of gruesome parts in it. Um, but. <laughs> Charlotte, from your point of view, um, this is, uh, Neil, you've written a lot of uh, films uh, of your own scripts in the past, but from your own point, Charlotte, this is uh, a bit of a first for you in terms of um, writing the uh, script. Wondering how the how you got involved in that and how you worked out writing between yourself and uh, the, the third writer as well. Well, I got involved bit by bit, really, because, um, you know, the, the concept idea kind of come to us through um, Neil's friend, Edward. And, um, you know, he, he gave us this idea and concept and we, we both really liked it. Um, but we, we, there was just, we knew there was a germ of an idea in there, but there, there wasn't much, much there. There's no meat on the bone really. So we, I didn't have any plans to write it. It was just gonna be Ed and, um, and Neil. And it, it, was, it was a slow bit by bit process because I would like, you know, give Neil some ideas and some of my thoughts and he would go, OK. And then, like it just kind of ended up co-writing it together, really. So, um, yeah, first experience. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I think it was a great, great team, great contrast because Neil comes at it from a director's point of view and I'm coming at it from an actor's point of view, non-horror before this. Wasn't wasn't really into horror films and um I, of course, have now been converted. I love <laughs> horror films. And <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a bit by bit process and absolutely loved it. And um, yeah, it was, it was. I think you just got kind of drawn to it more and more and more. So it was like, initially yeah. it was like a few ideas and then the ideas just kept on coming. And then you got really attached to the story and the characters. And, and then it was just like, okay, well, so we're, what we're doing here is co-writing. We're bouncing ideas backwards and yeah. forwards, and you know that this that's co-writing. Yeah. So it well, kind of became that, that. What is that actual process then, Neil? Because with I can understand with a writer on their own, and you're on your own, and you can thrash it out. But with three of you, are you sat in a room? Are you firing ideas? You know, via email back and forth, or how, how did that work with this script? Um, well, it's kind of started out like me and Ed sat down and took the germ of an idea and fleshed it out into kind of a, 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 a sort of rough storyline. And then I took it away and Charlotte and I turned that into a script. Um, and if practically speaking, if I do the typing, but that's the typing is just basically just, you know, we, you spent like a day or something, right, or, or the morning or something like that, whatever, like making notes, discussing ideas, where can this, you know, where, what, how, what is this scene that we're doing? What's the point of it? Um, and then I'll take those notes away and I'll, and I'll draft it up and then we'll read through it and make changes uh, and then backwards and forwards. But it's mainly the, you know, the, the, co, the co part of it is all the exchange of ideas and thoughts, the, the writing, the practical writing of it is the least complicated part. So it's just, you know, that's just the, hitting the keyboard yeah so the film has been you know as so many films have been delayed over the uh, its release has been delayed over the past year or so but to a certain degree it's played to your advantage hasn't it with the subtext of it with um you know the plague what we're going through at the moment and there's also um i don't know what maybe it's a chance perspective on it maybe that there's a a me too times up uh, a spin on it as well it was that uh intentional or how do you think all of that work has worked out for you well i don't think it was intentional in terms of well, the plague for sure we, we never predicted the plague uh you know yes, we shot it we shot it in the summer of 2019. yeah and i, so, I think it happened organically in terms of the, the me too stuff because we wanted it to be as real and 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 as truthful and as authentic as possible and that is what happened and you know 1665 the abuse of power mainly men against women um and and where are we at today well what's the difference between 1665 to, to 2021 yeah. the abuse of power and and and, and... Powerful, powerful men have been abusing women long before me too came along to highlight the problem it's uh 
it's ongoing. And, and, and it was kind of part of the reason that we took it on in the first place was that we felt that we want, I, I, I wanted to do a horror movie, but I wanted to do a horror movie that had something to say um, yeah. more than just be some cheap thrills, had something to say about the world that we live in. I think that, you know, sci-fi and horror are, are very good conduits to like tell stories about today, but set them in a different place or setting or, or whatever. Um, and so it wasn't, it was, it was, you know, be it me too and misogyny and God knows what it was like, okay, witch hunts, sexism, all of these things still exist today in different forms. Uh, the, the, the contemporary witch hunts are cancel culture, things like that. Yeah. Um, so they're still around, they're just taking different forms, or as it turns out, you know, actual witch hunts still take place in different parts of the world now. But no, very much so. Um, witch hunts are... So, you know, uh, so I thought it's 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 as relevant now as it was back then. It's, it's almost like the, the, the villages, it's just expanded actually, it's got worse, because the villages in the film are almost like the media, because they're the ones that spread the word and gets out there, and, and today it's, it's worse because you have social media and stuff, but... Yeah, and, like and even just, just like, worse. even just looking at the news, you know, I, I, you know, seeing seeing the mob storm the Capitol building in the States, it was like all, 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 all it seemed they were missing was their pitchforks and their flaming torches, you know? It, yeah. it, 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 it's not a million miles away. You I know, think people it, talking about, you know, not wearing masks because it's, it's the, the devil's, devil's work. work, you know? It's like, wow, this, we haven't moved on at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, from your, your point of view, Neil, and also for yourself, Charlotte, um, there seem to be uh, quite a few difficult scenes in this. Uh, Charlotte, you kind of really do go through the, the, the mill with this, and there must be some awkward uh, scenes for you to have shot as well, Neil. Uh, I'm just wondering from both of your perspectives, uh, what you found the most difficult scenes to physically shoot uh, in the film? Yeah, you know, I, I never make it easy for myself, that's for sure. <laughs> um, certainly always, always trying to challenge myself and be ambitious with the things we were doing. This was a, this was a very low budget film um, that we managed to make look way more expensive than it really is, um, just through setting these challenges and coming up with creative solutions and things. But physically, yeah, we put Charlotte through the ringer with torture devices and throwing her in lakes and dousing her with cold water and but rain it, and physical, fire and God knows what. The physical stuff wasn't the most challenging for me. It was actually the, the, the mental, um, emotional side of things because it was getting to that place and making sure it is as truthful as possible and and, and being as truthful, yeah. you know, character as possible. And it was tough. That was tough. Making sure that I'm at that that level every time and every day, that, that number 10, you know? Yeah. So that was uh, that was the most challenging for me. Yeah, because you had to go yeah. to some pretty dark places. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I can't, to be, uh, make myself so vulnerable and open myself up so much, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I was thinking um, with that opening scene where uh, you're in this torrential rain, in the mud, the rain machine, you know, rain machines aren't, you know, getting hit with that level of water is not comfortable, but as well as the other scenes, you know, there's the torture scene, there's a fight scene, there's a, uh, you know, there's obviously sex scenes in there as well, which, um, uh, you know, none, none of those are easy scenes to shoot. Yeah. No, uh, they're not. They're not much. They're not. The physical stuff, like fun. I no, I like. I learned to horse ride, which I oh, I, was, oh, I don't want a horse ride. I've never got on a horse before. Can my stunt double do it? Absolutely loved it. Uh, sword fighting, uh, loved that. I, uh, and the fighting stuff, the fight stuff towards the end, that was, that was really, that was that was really fun. But it's always a little scary because when you're dealing with fire and horses and weapons, it's it's a little scary because yeah. you know, accidents happen. Um, but I, I guess um, no one really got hurt, did they? Thank God. Um, there was a couple of moments here and there. I nearly hurt a stunt man by accident. Swinging, I was swinging my sword in the rain in the opening yeah. sequence, and I could barely see because the the, the movie rain, rain slipping in the mud, slipping in the mud, and uh, I was getting closer and closer and closer to the poor stunt double hanging from the tree. At, and I'm sorry, one double. Yes, and and um, thank God, uh, and it was a real sword. Thank God, Neil called cut in time, and uh, everyone <laughs> yeah, kept yeah. their heads intact. Atta <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But apart from that, yeah, it so, was it was um, one stayed safe. In them terms of 
authenticity. The um, you know, it's quite well documented about uh, you know the, the 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 torture of perceived witches. There's that one yeah. particular um, thing that Sean comes up with it, that tool instrument. Um, uh, were all these kind of based in reality? Is that uh, you know something that uh, existed or? Yes, it, it, it was very important that, that we used the tortures methods that were real. Uh, there is one of those pair anguish things in, I believe it's the Tower of London, or it might be the London Dungeon, but it's that they were real, definitely real, um, used on men and women alike. And uh, yeah, absolutely horrific. And we had to, we just wanted to make it as, as authentic as possible and the torture stuff to be, because we all the, all the historic um, torture trials, they were all lethal. And of course, Grace had to survive through them. So it, yeah. they were the, the most mildest ones, where actually they- They, they seem they survived. Survived. They seem, they, they seem survivable, whereas things like the docking stool or um, they or they tie you in a sack with a couple of rats or something and throw you in a river. And if <laughs> if you uh, if you drown, you're, you're innocent. And if you float back to the surface, you're guilty and they'll execute you anyway. So. Yeah, a lot of the, the the trials and tortures were essentially executions by by other means. Yeah. So the um the location that you've got uh, the the castle location is it looks fantastic. I, I gather this was shot in uh, Hungary, is that right? Um, yeah. Yes. But it's a, a, a beautiful location. But I would have thought it's probably not the easiest location to shoot in. Would, would that be right? Uh, we we got very lucky and we found a, um, a back lot in a studio in, in just outside Budapest that has been there since the 80s and has been used on any number of things, but it contains a medieval village, a couple of taverns, a castle, dungeons, and a, a lot of the sets that we needed. And we needed our, yeah, our production designer and went in and revamped everything and made it our own, but the structure of it was fundamentally there. And that was incredibly lucky. Yeah. Uh, we, did, we did scout locations in the UK, actual castles and things like that, but it was just going to be proved to be too um, uh, cost prohibitive to do it in the UK, sadly. So uh, yeah. we found this amazing back lot. And the only thing that we really had to build from scratch was the cottage that we, because we were going to burn it down. But yeah. um, no, I mean, it was kind of a production design miracle really. <laughs> were you um restricted in any way in what you could do there because you've got you know lots of fire scenes you've got stunts going on um charlotte you'll kind of uh go through obviously the uh, a number of uh, moments which uh, look a bit hairy to say the least <laughs> yeah uh yeah we were we were we could do certain amounts of fire on the sets we set somebody on fire in one of the sets and um we could have like fire uh, fire bars things like that but we had to be very careful because all the sets are made of wood and yeah you know if they caught fire we would be in trouble yeah. um uh, but yeah we will we we were a little bit limited but on the whole it was fine yeah and um sean put we uh you work with uh, we've worked with sean quite a lot neil um and i'm wondering from your point of view charlotte uh, how you found working with sean because he's quite intense in this and um he veers, his character veers between, you know, almost oleaginous at one point, right through to kind of being downright objectionable to you. Yeah, uh, he was, he's absolutely phenomenal to work with. He's very powerful. Uh, he was, he was great. Um, yeah, he had, he had a really interesting, I think, complex character because he did care for her and he really did believe, not care for her, but he really did believe what he was doing was right. And she really was a witch. Whereas Steve Waddington's character, he was just a sadist and wanted just to hurt her and, and, and in, a, in any way possible. But with Sean's character, it was, um, you know, and there's some pretty, pretty intense moments. So, you know, where he's holding her hand and he, he feels her pain. And when he's actually um, subjecting the pain to himself, you know, whipping himself yeah. and that. And yeah. um, I know he did a lot of research on that and he said that, you know, that he, they used to, I think one witch fighter general he was he was researching at the time, used to have them um, put pins in their shoes and just talk just to themselves. Crazy stuff. And yeah. I think that, you know, they had such a history together, meaning, you know, when she found out about his mum and what he did to his mum, I think it was, um, that just come across, didn't it? Because 
yeah, it cut, what, you know, the way we well, wrote it. And yeah. There was such a connection there. And um, yeah, I'm just so glad we got to play that part. Yeah, <laughs> so, for me, so it was, for me, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was the first time I've worked with Sean since Doomsday. Just, a, just such a, I love working with Sean. It's just, it's always a pleasure. And to do something different with him every time and to, uh, you know, push his limits a little bit and, and, you know, test him, I suppose, as an actor and give him something different to do, challenges. Um, I, I've not seen him play this kind of part before. He certainly, you know, he never played a villain with me before. So yeah. Um, yeah. it was just, it was just great to, to do that. That's great. Well, thank you very much uh, for your time. Um, I, I hope the film does well. It's 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 worth it. The final thing I just wanted to ask you, and this is for you, Neil, is, um, and, and we spoke about this some a uh, little while ago. But what's the latest on a Dog Soldiers sequel? <laughs> Sorry. Current, current hot topic. Um, <laughs> the, the, well, the latest is that the the right people are talking to each other and. We're, we're closer than we've been in 20 years to making it happen. So uh, fingers crossed, touch wood, and um, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll have more to report in the future. Right. Okay. That's great. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you very much, Charlotte, for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks.